Connie had an amazing aunt who passed away in December. She was 93 years old, born in Texas, but married in 1949 to a guy who just came back from World War II. His name was Raymond Goldsmith. He grew up farming in this area, spent his whole life here. He passed away in April, but she was long before, you know, you thought anything about women being more active. You know, after the war, women were kind of relegated back to that role, you know, you know, bake now. housekeeping, bake cookies, have babies, yada yada. But she was always one thing I can guarantee you. You talk to anybody around here, this was not a person who didn't tell you exactly what she thought. I mean, everybody will tell you she had no problem telling you if she didn't like what you were doing or liked what you were doing. She didn't hold anything back. I don't think when she, if she had some criticism or. Uh, something pleasurable to say about people, or she'd just express her mind. Did it surprise you, your independence, that you, I mean, that your ability to survive and thrive and... Uh, I really never thought much about it, but that's exactly what it was. I guess we paid attention to her when, if she said it like that, you know, and she spoke up more than Raymond did. <laughs> she said she was in Topeka one time at some kind of meeting, and. Somebody asked her, a lady asked her, what does your husband do? She said he's a farmer, and she said this person said, I bet he's one of those farmers that rides around in an air-conditioned tractor. And she said she asked the lady, what does your husband do? And she told her in, in some office, she said, does he have an air-conditioned office? And the lady went, yeah, and she said, I told her, <laughs> you know. <laughs> She'd grown up on a farm, nothing this big, comes to Kansas, falls in love with Kansas, and starts through a couple of friends learning to do some oil painting. Betty Herman, well, she would see me sketching. She said, I'll take you to Topeka and kind of get you started what you need. And uh, I would get my stuff out and get him breakfast and get him off to work. And, and then I'd try to paint some on the table. But boy, what really turned her on was Bob Ross and Jerry Arnell at KTWU. What's your painting meant to you through the years? What, what's it been for you? Well, I think the surprise in creation and my love of doing it and trying to learn. I bought books, studied the perspective and different things. And she blossoms as an artist. People around here start buying her paintings. Actually, I was become well known, uh -huh. pretty well known over the country. Our banker then uh, uh, wrote a big article about how fortunate we were to have such a talent person. I have one of them there on the wall. She painted for me. So natural and just authentic. I just told other people about it and then some of them got more interested so it just kind of mushroomed. Word spreads people outside the county, even people around the country start buying paintings. I, I think about everybody in Osage County is well, my paintings. I have Illinois and some in um, in England sent for gifts in New York. Was there sort of a validation or satisfaction when you actually realized people are buying my paintings? Yes, it was. Uh, that is just almost like a compliment. Yeah. And of of uh, in fact, here the other day, Leon was uh, adjusting the lights there on the fireplace, uh -huh. and he said, "Ann, that's a pretty picture." Uh-huh. And I said, you just gave me a gift. And he looked at me and I said, I don't hear that much anymore. And she always sort of had this thing, I felt like an edge of wanting to prove that she was worthy. And one of the things she did that, she was a full 50% partner in this farming operation of helping my uncle more than helping, sometimes even bossing him around on financial stuff. I think they discussed about everything before either of them did and it made any big decision. They were both hard workers. They didn't uh, oh, go out and just throw money around and they weren't real tight either, but they were careful. She was a great gardener. You see that when you look around the house. I had never known what gardening was. I never knew what doing anything in a yard and I loved it had a shop in Linden where she sold her paintings and sold other items she would buy and resell there. And uh, it turned out that I was a pretty good bowler. There were 10 stockholders built at Bowling Alley in Linden. They came to me and asked me if 
if they asked and sent me to school to teach bowling, would I be interested? So I talked to Raymond and I said, I wouldn't mind doing this, but I said, look, it will look very good. But he said, I think you ought to go. And I said, yeah, but I'm going to stay in the motel down there by myself. And I said, what are people, what will they think about me going off? And he said, that's foolish. He said, I want you to go. But the painting really became, I think, the thing to say, I'm somebody and I'm really good at something. My uncle bought a Chevy pickup, I think the first new vehicle he ever bought. She did a sketch of that and then turned that into a painting of him doing what he did out in the back of that pickup, throwing hay out to cattle in deep snow in a Kansas winter time. She, at the very end, gave away quite a few paintings and then hated that she gave them away. They were like children to her. It's like the time she had this real pretty, they had over forever in their dining room, a, a painting, biggest one I've ever seen her do with three flowers. And she had, somebody commissioned, several people commissioned her to do paintings and stuff, everything from wildlife, somebody did a tiger, but somebody wanted this real pretty big picture of three uh, blossoms, you know, flowers. and. Anyway, when the lady she'd done it for died, my aunt went to the estate sale, Nan Ann started getting a bidding war with the guy to buy this painting. She wound up paying quite a bit to get it back. Well, the guy she'd been in the bidding war with, he was mad. And she went and said, look, I'm the artist who did this and, and I just really wanted it back. That didn't play, Katie. She said he was still really mad at her. I bought this beautiful hibiscus flower painting of Anne's that she painted. And I've loved this picture from the day I saw it at an art show in Burlingame, Kansas. And she won best to show with it. Watercolor? Um, I think this one is. And she was typically an oil painter. One of my favorite ones is a sepia tone that really kind of captures solitude of this area. After they passed, one night I was sitting outside here under a tree, and I normally live in Fort Worth, you know, bustle, bustle. And I'm out here and there's this solitude and peace and quiet, hear a train whistle in the distance, and I thought, that's why they, and especially she, since we're talking about Annie, and loved being out here so much. She would have loved that even more people than have her paintings experience them. Rocks that she painted on, and my grandma loved cardinals. And as soon as I saw these, I knew they were meant to be as well. And I think most of them, at least one is signed. Sometimes you're in the middle of stuff and you don't see the forest for the trees. I think she would want people to go, wow, we do live in a really cool place, especially the people who are out farming, live in a rural area, or even people who just appreciate the landscape when they're not too busy to do it. I think that's what a lot of what she would want. Well, she was well liked. I think they looked up to her for, for her abilities to paint and just friendly and, and uh, wanted to help with anything that was involved with the community. Ann and Raymond were very good people. My mom and dad had known them a long time and they were just wonderful people. I, I just always thought my hand hand was, was very glamorous, which you don't usually think of for somebody that, you know, out in the farm country, but uh, they always had that polish. She just had some good ideas and, you know, to put it down and invisible to people. She saw art as a way, I think, of reflecting her love for Kansas. It would take I know a Michael